On May 10th, 2020, I uploaded my latest video. I wore 18th century clothes every day for five years, and this is what I learned to my audience of 3,000 subscribers. By the following Sunday, the video had over 300,000 views, I had gained thousands of subscribers, and my whole life changed. Ever since, I've been doing YouTube full time, reached the 100,000 subscriber milestone in less than one year, and have learned a lot, a lot along the way. This video is about my experience going viral and what lessons I've learned. This isn't a tips or tricks video on how to go viral, but an honest discussion of what happens when you go viral. This video is based heavily in my own personal experience and it might not be an accurate reflection of other people's experiences or thoughts. However, I did think that the knowledge I've gathered over this year and going through this experience could be extremely helpful, not only for people who might be watching this video who are currently going through their own viral moment or YouTubers who have grown exceptionally quickly and are a little unsure of themselves and are dealing with things or just the YouTube watcher who is just curious about what happens when people go viral. So I'm I'm hoping that going through this video, not only will I be able to kind of relay some advice and some insight over what to do, how to feel, well, how to feel, but also give an accurate description of what people go through and what I went through myself. So it's a little bit of like personal story time and also some big sister advice, I guess you could say. But with that to start, we need to talk about the video itself and analyze what exactly happened. I dress like this every day for almost six years of my life and I learned a lot in that time. A lot of things that you might expect from someone dressing like this, but also a lot of things that were actually a big surprise and not at all what I thought I would experience. My channel launched on March 22nd, 2020 in the midst of all of this. At the end of April, 2020, I had filmed two videos over the course of Saturday. One was trying to recreate some Joseph de Croo portraits kind of badly, but it did give me this moment. <laughs> which I think is honestly the funniest thing on my channel. And I sat down and I decided to talk to the camera about wearing 18th century clothing for five years. I was hot, I was tired, and I was really ready to put on some sweatpants. I figured it would do well, whatever that means, because whenever I talk about the subject before at lectures or presentations, people always found it interesting. I never though in a million years thought it would go viral. On May 10th, 2020, I uploaded the video. How did I know the video was going viral? A lesson in delusions and levels of vi vi virality. Virality? Virality. Virality. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Virality. I'm gonna call it virality, and if you all don't like it, I don't apologize. It's hard for me to say it the other way. <laughs> When I released the video, it was doing extremely well from the get-go, but nothing too crazy. However, when I woke up the next morning to over 13,000 views, I knew my life had changed overnight. This was not normal. Now, looking back on the stats nowadays, if I have 13,000 views in 24 hours, that's actually a very badly performing video for me. But at that size, for how small I was, it was huge. Huge. It was around day three when things really took off with the video, gaining tens of thousands of views a day. And actually looking back, I think I miscalculated that because if I hit 330,000 views in seven days, is that what? No, maybe that's like, is that on average like 21,000? No, that's not the right math, Abby. Um, that's three. Okay. Or it's, it's probably about like 40,000 views a day on average, I think, if I'm doing my math correctly. Mm -hmm. At the peak of the video's virality, I gained about 3,000 subs a day. So I went from 3,500 subscribers when that video came out to basically 35,000 subscribers by the end of May. It was a lot. All of a sudden, you just have all these eyes on you. And you're just like, oh my God, what do I do? <laughs> all these people. And in, in addition to my YouTube blowing up, my Instagram blew up as well. It was incredibly unexpected and I genuinely went around the rest of the day riding waves of, oh my God, this is so cool. And oh my God, I'm terrified. I, I couldn't sit still. I kept like darting around and, and just kind of like, not like big shaking, but just like that is, it's like when you feel electricity, almost like it's running through your system the whole time. <laughs> Not too close! Oh! Not too close. 
Jesus Christ! <laughs> that went right through me. Really? Now, the biggest question that I think so many people want to know the answer to is why did this video go viral, especially for such a small channel? And and honestly, while I'm not 100% exactly sure why, I, I do think it was just a perfect storm. I had actually just collaborated with Rachel Maxey on a vintage style, not vintage values video. So I had this little bit of foot traffic coming to my channel already, just people checking me out who didn't know who I was, queuing the YouTube algorithms that people might be interested in my channel. The subject matter, well, it's weird and it's quirky and, and humans, frankly, we're very curious people. We're gonna click on weird stuff, right? Like that, that's what we do. We're like, what? <laughs> click, you know, and it's a very human story and it's a very personal story. And then additionally, the SEO. So title formulations in YouTube are actually extremely common and they're common because they work. It's a mix of hooking the audience with something that causes an emotional reaction, good or bad, and keyword usage. So my title, I wore 18th century clothes every day for five years, and this is what I learned, for these courses aren't bad, did exactly that. I wore blank. This phrasing piques interest and curiosity in the user. Oh, here's a person who did this weird thing. How weird is she? This is what I learned. I'm making you, the viewer, a promise to tell you something you don't know. And then I use corsets in the title because YouTube freaking loves corsets. Like people were trying to correct me in the comments, like there's stays. I'm like, no shit, there's stays. I know there's stays. YouTube doesn't care about the word stays. YouTube likes the word corsets. It's just SEO, guys. It's just SEO. It's a business decision. I also completely filled out my description and tags with keywords relating to the subject, which if you're looking for some YouTube advice, this is it. Do not skimp on your descriptions. It is a 5,000 character SEO goldmine. For those of you who don't know what SEO means, it's search engine optimization because YouTube is actually a search engine. I think too that there were just a lot of people on YouTube during this time and having some interesting stories that could drive some escapism was really what a lot of people were looking for, especially during May of 2020. All in all, I do genuinely think that this was a perfect storm for the video. And the reason I say it's a perfect storm is that I've produced videos since that I know meet all of the criteria on going viral, but they've not gone viral. I've also produced a lot of videos that have done extremely well, but have not gone viral yet. And so, there's a certain je ne sais quoi about going viral that I'm having a hard time exactly replicating, but I understand how it happened to a certain degree, but replicating it is a little bit more tricky. Part two, what's good about going viral? Well, one, the money, obviously. <laughs> In order to become monetized on YouTube, you have to meet two big keystones for those of you who don't know. First, you have to have a thousand subscribers. I already had that, so that little box was checked for me. The second and much more difficult to reach is 4,000 watch hours. When this video was released, I was basically exactly at 2,000 watch hours. By the end of that Monday, I was well over 4,000. I was able then to apply to be a part of the YouTube Partner Program by the middle of that week, and then I was able to start earning money on the video by that Friday, May 15th. The biggest explosion of views had already happened by then, so I actually lost out on a lot of money. The only downside about having a video go viral when you're not monetized is that you don't actually make any money on the video before you're fully admitted into the YouTube Partner Program and sign up for AdSense, et cetera. However, this explosion in subs and traffic, in addition to this video's evergreen quality, evergreen means that the subject matter is always quote unquote relevant, is that the nice thing is that this video has been a consistent earner for me for the past year. And it definitely has been helping float me through some really rough times that came in the aftermath of releasing this video. I know a lot of people like to know about money and stats. And so for the sake of clarity and honesty, and for anyone who's watching, who is researching YouTube and viral videos, since the video's release, I've made $9,477.53 in ads on that video only. Number two, the platform. This video gave me the jumping off point to grow my channel as fast as I did in 2020. And I was able to make a living to, and do YouTube full time successfully immediately following this video's release. The other thing is opportunities. And this ties into platform, but this video has put my name out in front of a lot of people who never would have known about me otherwise, thus giving way to opportunities and connections that wouldn't have happened before. It's also given me more clout within my professional community, financial resources to help make a difference, and a platform that I can use to help promote people within my community who deserve recognition and deserve to be seen and known and listened to. Part three the five emotional stages of going viral. So this is where things are gonna get a bit emotional. I'm gonna try not to cry. 
but I do really want to take some time to talk about the dark side of going viral. When I was doing some research into what kind of videos show up about going viral on YouTube, there's a very heavy emphasis on here's how to go viral. My top 10 tips and tricks on how to go viral fast on YouTube. Five video ideas that will go viral for you and grow your channel to zero subscribers to 50,000 subscribers. 50,000 subscribers. Just, you know, shit like that. But no one really seems to want to discuss what actually happens to the creator, especially when the video that goes viral is a bit more personal than say a video essay on Star Wars or s something, you know. Okay, so the emotional stages of going viral according to someone who's gone through it. Stage one, shock and excitement. Stage two, denial. Stage three, reality bites. Four, finding the equilibrium, coming to terms, and five is resolution. So basically we've already covered the first emotional phase of going viral, that shock and excitement phase. This phase for me lasted a few days, getting monetized was kind of a big to-do for me. And let me tell you, holy crap, does it feel good. Like you're literally watching your life change in real time, hopefully for the best. It's freaking incredible. Quick caveat though, this is only because my viral video was a quote unquote good viral video. I was not going viral for something quote unquote bad. That's gonna be a very different experience for that person and something that I luckily cannot speak to. Denial set in pretty quickly. And what I mean by denial is just denying the idea that quote unquote, it's going viral. I kept going, the video popped or calling it baby viral. It wasn't until much later that I came to terms with the fact that I went viral. I think I fully realized I had gone viral when one of those Facebook media pages that reposts like viral videos reached out to me wanting to quote unquote, share my story. I told them no, because I was really worried that they would edit my video and manipulate it to make me look like a freak or in a way that I wasn't comfortable with. Also, this doesn't mean that you're not still excited by everything. You absolutely can be. It's just more that your brain starts to downplay what's happening in order to protect you. So very often, I think phase one and phase two actually pretty play pretty well together. So I do wanna give a quick trigger warning here and content warning. Um, if you are someone who suffers from anxiety, gets upset about the discussion of things like panic attacks, mental health, just go ahead and skip to this timestamp, okay? I just wanna give you guys a fair warning. Phase three is when reality sets in and you realize that you are going viral. You're no longer riding high over the excitement of popping and you're no longer able to fully deny what's happening either. You're now stuck in reality. No longer are you dealing with only good feedback and that's only if the video is going viral for good reasons. But now you're getting DMs for people who ask you really off the wall questions, people making assumptions about your morals, your religious and personal life and beliefs, being called names in comments, having people talk about your body, your appearance, the way you speak, the way you look, demanding statements or thoughts from you about subjects that really don't have anything to do with the actual point of the video. And then additionally, you're having to deal with the real world implications of what is actually happening. This is a sink or swim sort of moment. You have to quickly establish boundaries and build a very thick skin in order to protect yourself. You also have to keep both feet on the ground at the same time so that way this attention doesn't go to your head. But I quickly had to teach myself to not read the comments and I implemented and still maintain a no comment reading on a video after 24 to 48 hours of it going public rule on my channel to protect my mental health. And this is kind of where that parasocial relationship that so many people are discussing nowadays comes into play. And it also very quickly develops with the public and you as the creator when you're going viral. You're put into this weird position of quote unquote being famous almost overnight, but still very much a human being who is freaking the f out about what's going on. Finding that balance here is extremely tough because if you're used to interacting with people, being candid, answering all the DMs and shit posting on your Instagram, having all of these eyes on you at once really makes you question what you say, how you say it, the validity of what you're even doing and how people view you, the creator, which now has to be different than you, the person. But you haven't had time to formulate that, to create those boundaries. It's, it's really hard to explain but basically you, you go through this phase where you're in it and you realize you're in it and there's so much good happening, but you also are completely terrified because you don't know what could happen tomorrow. And on May 26th, 2020, I was fired from my full-time job. 
So yeah, not only was it the pandemic, not only was I dealing with the insanity that was YouTube, I lost my source of income and health insurance. I was and still am the highest earner in my marriage. And there was no way that we could have survived a West Coast mortgage without my income. While I will not discuss the details of what happened, it is an important part of the story and something that actually happens more often than we realize. It's extremely common for people who go viral to lose their jobs, even if the viral content is positive and unproblematic in its nature. This loss of income compounding with the anxiety around going viral can have a really negative effect on your mental health. Health. And I was not exempt from that. One morning, some time between May 10th and May 26th, I'm not really sure, I had my first full-blown panic attack. And yes, this panic attack did happen before I was actually fired. It happened during the events leading up to it. Luckily, I was able to communicate to my mom what was going to happen. I, I actually woke up that morning realizing that something was wrong. The anxiety felt different than all of the anxiety leading up before it but I couldn't talk myself down. I couldn't, I couldn't rationalize the feeling. I couldn't get my brain to snap out of it. I look at my mom and I'm pretty sure I had this kind of almost drugged out look on my face. And I just looked at her and I was just like, I'm not okay. I think I'm having a panic attack. And like the moment that I said it aloud, it just was like, whoosh. My mom, she grabbed me. So she did the five, four, three, two, one with me. And in the middle of it, in the middle of it, Chrissy shows up. And part of my panic attack was related to this irrational fear that my friends were going to abandon me, that I was gonna be alone. And they just breathed me through it. And Chrissy was just there stroking my hair going, I'm not gonna leave you. I'm not gonna abandon you. I love you. You're my friend. I am here for you. I support you 100%. Anyone who's ever gone through something like this, you know, it's not something you easily forget. I'm not saying that everyone who goes viral and, and gets fired, goes through something like this. I, I do think it's important that all of us understand that there are very strong emotional reactions when you go viral, especially on a platform like YouTube. There needs to be some space and some grace given to, to those people. Oh, okay. Oh. <sighs> I have to like look at myself on camera to make sure I'm not like a total mess. <sighs> Okay, well now you guys know that I get really red in the face when, when I cry and my nose gets red and my skin gets blotchy. So, woo. With all that being said, I do also wanna say that looking back one year later, I am in a place now where I am honestly grateful for what happened to me and I consider it a blessing. And in fact, when my husband came home from work that night, I got fired. After I told him what had happened, he looked at me dead in the eyes and went, good. Feel free to interpret that as you like. Now about the imposter syndrome, y'all, let me tell you. Between your YouTube analytics getting all sorts of screwed up with a viral video, there also comes this feeling of not belonging and feeling big imposter syndrome feeling and refreshing your stats because you just know that everyone that subscribed to you is going to also then unsubscribe in mass and you're now gonna be back at zero subs. Just any second now, just refresh, 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 refresh. And then you feel like you're not gonna be able to produce content that anyone's gonna watch. Oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Oh my God, this was it, I'm done. This was it, this is all I got. These hopes and dreams that that come up very, very quickly when when you're in the emotional high of this roller coaster of going viral in the excitement phase that it's all gonna fall apart just instantly, just gone, done. You know, it's scary. It's very weird up in there when this, this stuff happens.
practically speaking, for anyone who's watching this who maybe is going through a viral video or uh, a baby viral video or anything like that, your analytics are going to be screwed up for a while after this. Because of the problematic and slightly toxic nature in which YouTube presents their stats to you as a creator, it can compound those feelings of inadequacy or imposter syndrome. For those of you who don't know, YouTube ranks your most recent 10 videos in order of views in comparison to how long the video has been released. They also post quote unquote helpful feedback about the video, which sometimes isn't helpful at all and is in fact really triggering and upsetting for a lot of creators. Oh, people just don't like your video. Meh. Ah, you thumbnail might be ugly. Yeah. True story. And then they reward you when you're one out of 10 with like little like confetti fireworks in the app on the phone. And it, so you get this like big dopamine high. You're like, yay, I'm a good student. I'm a good kid. I'm a good creator. YouTube loves me. And then if you're not there, they're like, we're not mad, we're disappointed. Like that's what it feels like with YouTube's uh, analytic backend sometimes. So, and then what happens is when you have a video go viral and you gain loads of subscribers in a short amount of time, like these analytics just get totally skewed towards those numbers as average. And it takes weeks and weeks to find a new normal in subscriber growth, video views, income, all of it. So the first time that this happens, it takes a while to adjust because you want that endorphin high all the time when you log into Creator Studio. But after a month or two and YouTube's telling you your views are quote unquote down, even though they're not actually down or that quote unquote this video isn't appealing to as wide of an audience as quote unquote normal, it can make you question everything. But again, I want to reiterate to anyone out there going through this cycle right now that this is normal and it is not an accurate reflection of your content or your channel. You have to give analytics a few months to balance back out. For example, I'm still dealing with negative feedback in the creator studio about after cutting down to three videos a month instead of my four. They keep telling me views are down and subs are down. It's like, well, I'm, I'm producing one less video a month, guys, like obviously. The analytics, while powerful, they don't and they cannot take everything into consideration. So you have to keep your head on straight and trust in yourself as the creator. So I do just wanna take a moment to say to you, if you are watching this video because you are currently dealing with a viral video and have feelings of anxiety and imposter syndrome, I'm here to tell you that that is 100% normal. You're doing great. Believe in yourself. And if the comments are wrecking your mental health, stop reading them. Phase four, coming to terms. I don't know how long this might take for other creators, but for me, I had to come to terms pretty quickly with everything once I lost my job. Being a highly self-motivated, stubborn workaholic, I have Mars and Capricorn in my fourth house, for those of you who are curious. I settled into my new reality and buckled down into weekly content production, setting strong boundaries and forcing myself to accept the ebb and flow that is YouTube growth. There are highs and there are lows. So for example, my channel crashed down to a crawl in June and July following that viral video with lower views and a much slower subscriber growth. It finally picked back up in August, 2020 and was kicking ass leading up to Christmas. Now in 2021, I've settled down a bit, relax a little bit, and I'm trying to implement long-term practices and changes that keep myself and my channel stable and to prevent burnout. While it can take a while to come to terms with going viral, you can and, and you do adapt to it. Use it as an educational experience, take lessons from the video, what did you do right, what did you do wrong, and apply it to whatever comes next. Not only is the video going to be a stable performer for you and your statistics, but also hopefully it'll help you become a better creator in the long term. That, the, that is my official five stages of, of the emotional roller coaster that is going viral and what my experience was with going viral one year later and, and what I've learned. So I, I do hope that this has been helpful. I hope that this has been enlightening. Everything I said here is just a reflection of my own personal experience and my own personal thoughts on the matter. It does not reflect the broader community or what other people gone through or other creators think about the subject, but I do hope that it, it gives you guys some insight, uh, especially if you're curious about what it's like to actually go viral. So with that, I do hope that you all have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you all back here next week with another video. Bye.